So this video is meant for two kinds of people. The first is for indie developers that are interested in potentially releasing their game on consoles, and the second is for people who are interested in how the whole porting process works, particularly the part regarding how to get into the programs that allow you to start porting for the three main consoles. So this video really focuses on how you can do this alone without a publisher, and just so you can trust that I have a bit of experience in this, I've released one game on Xbox, two games on PlayStation, and three games on Switch, and I actually even have videos on this channel about all that process, like the one on screen here is when I first released my first game ever on Switch. But all of this is not even considering the two other games that I've currently got under development for consoles, nor the freelance that I've done for games that are not under my studio. So now that we're done with that, let's get to the first one, which is Xbox, since that's the easiest one in my experience. And what you're going to do is go to this website, and by the way, all the links are going to be in the description. But after you go to this website, you're going to click on this button here that lets you apply to become an Xbox developer. And then you can sign in with your Microsoft account and select it at Xbox. And as you can see, this gives you the ability to access dev kits and develop for Xbox, Windows Store, and other kind of stuff. After that, you're going to want to fill these two forms so that they can have your contact information and sign an NDA so that you can know what you can and can't talk about. And this is the perfect time to mention that because of NDAs like this, I can't go over every single part of the process, but I'll take you as far as possible, and from there, you can pretty easily use the consoles as resources to take it to the finish line. They'll have like documentation and step-by-step -step tutorials that you can follow to get your game from something that works on Windows or mobile to actually on consoles. So after you sign the NDA, you can see that there's a section where you can fill out your game information, but because it's locked by the NDA, I can't talk much about it, but from experience, it's pretty easy to fill out. And so when it comes to the actual porting process for Xbox, I've mainly served as a kind of support point instead of doing the whole porting myself, but I've found that it mainly involves setting up stuff in the back end with achievements and also implementing the software that allows your game to interact with the Xbox ecosystem. In general, for porting, the optimization process can be incredibly painful, and I'll touch on this a bit later, but for Xbox for me, for my current game, it's actually not been that bad at all. Like for example, I've got Soulstalker here, that's my early access game, that's actually on Steam right now, and we've got the Xbox ports up and running, and we haven't had to do any additional optimization work so far, because it just works. The Xbox systems are just powerful enough to make it not too much of a headache if you have a game that's reasonably computationally expensive. Now, the next platform is actually the complete opposite from Xbox in my opinion, and it's the one that is the most complicated, and that is PlayStation. And that's pretty surprising, isn't it? Most people seem to think that Nintendo is the hardest one, and that is true for the optimization side because the Switch is a handheld, but for all the backend and dev kit stuff, PlayStation, in my opinion, is by far the most complicated. And so, to start the process for this one, you'll have to go to this website and click on the Join Us Now button. Then you just select your region, and given that this video is all about porting your games, I assume you'll want to click on the Game Publishers and Developers option as well. Then you'll be given a list of all the stuff you have to provide to go forwards, and it's mostly pretty simple, like you'll have to put your contact details and provide a game design document and stuff like that, but there are three main things that really stick out. The first one is the most complicated one, and the one that I constantly get asked about when friends start this application process, and that is the static IP address that they mentioned here in this section. It's a bit tricky, and they ask you to put it in this format, but basically a static IP address, which can sometimes be called a fixed IP address, it's an address that never changes and it's used mostly for security reasons. And there are multiple ways of getting one, but it depends a bit on where you're located, and the most straightforward one, and the one that is available in most places, is just to reach out to your internet provider and ask about it to see what they offer. This is also definitely the most expensive way of doing it though, so check out to see if there are other approaches available to you as well. And so out of those three things that stuck out, the second one is that PlayStation requires you to have a registered company because they ask for registration documents. And this may be scary to some, but you may notice that they also allow sole traders to register as developers. And again, this depends a bit on the country you're from, but a sole trader is basically someone who works for themselves without a company, so someone who's like self-employed like a contractor. Personally, I've never applied this way, so I'm not entirely sure if you can really just put your passport into the application form, but otherwise, some countries have a specific system to allow you to set yourself as a sole trader in the commercial register. Like for example, I live in Switzerland, and while I don't run my studio this way, I could set up as a sole trader in the commercial register through this website here, so if it doesn't let you through with just your passport, try to look into how that works for your country. 
And so finally, the last of the three sticking out points for the placement application process is that you need to have an email with a custom domain so they don't allow any Gmails, Hotmails, or Yahoos or anything like that. And this is pretty annoying for many since it's just an extra hoop and an extra bill to take care of, but that's just how it is and it's an additional thing to keep in mind. When deciding what consoles to port to, I think you should really keep in mind that these three points that exist for PlayStation actually don't exist for Nintendo nor Xbox. And now, after you've gone through the whole application process, again, you can go through the onboarding process that they have on their backend and you'll be able to get a dev kit as well. I'm not sure exactly what I can talk about regarding the specifics, so I won't, but in my opinion, the PlayStation dev kits are the hardest to deal with out of the three main consoles, but the performance is similar to Xbox in that you won't really need to do much optimization if your game isn't super high fidelity. And now, finally, we're at the Switch. And this was the first console I ever worked with, and while some things are a bit hard to deal with, I think the whole process is a lot closer to the friendliness of the Xbox process as opposed to the PlayStation process. And so to start out, you'll have to go to this website and click on the register button and create an account. And I'm not sure if I can actually show anything beyond this, but from my experience, it's pretty simple, and you can just follow it by just doing whatever the website tells you. And the hard part with the Switch ports is not really all this admin backend stuff, it's actually really nice and it works pretty well once you tinker around for a bit and get used to it. Instead, the hard part, and I'm sure this is no surprise for many of you, is the optimization. And so I use Unity as my game engine so I can give you some benchmarks to target if you use that engine as well. And one key metric to keep in mind is this statistic right here that you can find in the game window of your editor and it's labeled as batches. And it's a pretty good measure for how GPU intensive your game is. And in short, if you're hovering around a thousand batches without having busted yourself optimizing the game, then your porting process might actually be not that hard at all because the GPU is the hardest part and around a thousand is pretty easy to get down to maybe 500 for most games if you haven't really optimized it yet. Like for context, this is the port that I did for Synth Beast, it's not out yet, but it's a port that I did just for testing the viability of the performance. And so by default, the game runs at about a thousand batches or so, and I made a special setting that made it run at 300 to 500, and it ran at about 45 frames per second at handheld mode in full resolution, so it wasn't that bad, all because the game is naturally not that intense. Then, another huge aspect of the Switch is that it's actually pretty slow at switching between scenes if they have a lot of objects. So if possible, try to design your game such that the scenes are either not that big, or if they are, design them in a way that you spend a good chunk of time in them so as to not trigger long loads very often. And then another thing to consider is that textures take an incredible amount of space. At least in my games, they're the number one contributor to disk size, and for many other developers that I've talked to, it seems to be the same. Because of this, RAM usage could be really, really effective and the Switch doesn't have that much RAM, so really make sure to use the settings to modify your textures. And I know that for myself, when I did this for the first time, I was worried about going too low, but really you can even go as low as 256 by 256 for some stuff. It doesn't look as bad as you might imagine because of the resolution of the Switch. So try to tinker around and see how that looks. So that's basically everything I'm able to tell you about how to start becoming a console indie developer because of NDAs, and I hope the video was useful. And not too long ago, I released Soul Stalker, which is the game that I showed as an example in parts of the video. So if you want to check it out on Steam, you can get it in the link below. And if you get it together with my other game, Wanted Shadows, you can get them together for just $5.70, which is crazy cheap, and they won't be that cheap on consoles. So do that if you want to support me and the games that I make with my studio. And just as a side note, Soul Stalker will be coming out on console in the first half of this year, thanks to the porting that Tim from Origami Panda Studios is doing for the game. So subscribe if you want to see more about that in the near future, and if you've never made a game before and you're interested in learning how to start so that you can apply all of this that you've learned in this video, click on the video on the screen. And that's all for this week's video, and I'll see y'all for the next one. Bye.